And uh, so he knows all about that. Well, we're here in Genesis chapter 39, if you'll find that. And we're looking at the life of Joseph now and uh, trying to gain what we can from his life. Joseph went through some challenging times. And last time, two weeks ago, we talked about the temptations that he faced uh, with Potiphar's wife. And he responded in the right way. Do you remember what he did? (laughs) He took off. He took off running, that's right, and which is the best way to deal with that kind of temptation. You just want to remove yourself from that situation entirely. Yes, sir? Uh, you know, that's a good question. That's a good question. And, uh, and, and in fact, I was going to kind of talk just a little bit about that because uh, that's right where we left off last time where uh, Potiphar threw Joseph into prison. And, uh, and so we, we pick it up there in verse number 20. It says, Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. Uh, did he believe his wife? Well, I think he probably knew his wife pretty well, and uh, <laughs> I'm not sure they did, that he did believe her, honestly, but uh, the Bible doesn't tell us very clearly here, but I could imagine that uh, he knew that he had to uh, do something about it to preserve his name, and of course the accusations that she was making, and perhaps even if he didn't believe it himself, uh, he seemed to be in a bind and had to do something. Uh, There was uh, no indication that Joseph tried to defend himself. There's no place where it says here that uh, that Joseph uh, talked to Potiphar, tried to plead with him or anything like that. And uh, Joseph uh, just uh, allowed the Lord to do whatever the Lord was going to do. And I think Joseph perhaps had the same I'd like to think that he had the same attitude that David had on many occasions where he said, God is my defense. God is my defense. And so uh, I don't know that he did uh, believe in there, but he had to put him in prison, and so he does. Now, this seems to be the, the prison that he's overseeing. <laughs> he's the, the captain of the, uh, of the guard here, and so he's in charge of prisoners He's in charge of the executioners, and, uh, and so it would seem that he perhaps is in charge of this prison as well. Could it be that he thought to himself, maybe later I can get him out? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure that that's what his attitude was, but uh, I'm sure he was disappointed, though, because under uh, Joseph, everything in his house was prospering, and now because of this accusation and because Joseph would be in prison, Uh, I can imagine that his house would suffer as a result and he wouldn't see the blessings that he had seen before because he certainly did attribute it to Joseph and to Joseph's God. Well, we find it in verse 21. Here's Joseph. It says, But the Lord was with Joseph. I imagine Joseph thought to himself, What's the deal? (laughs) I'm trying to do right. I'm doing something good here. I'm avoiding temptation. And I didn't even get mad and angry and try to defend myself. What's the deal? Why am I in prison? And there was no answer, necessarily. And we know the rest of the story. And perhaps for us, it's not as difficult to imagine here because we see what's going to happen in the future. But Joseph had no no idea. And, And so he's... He's burdened down, but he's not alone. He's not alone. And I think that's so important. Sometimes we go through rough times, don't we? And, and you think, why is this happening to me? But you're not alone, see. God is with you. He's right there next to you. He hasn't left you. Uh, Jesus promised, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. I don't know how many times I've quoted that verse to myself. Uh, just reassuring myself that God is with me. I am not alone. And what a blessing that is uh, to know. And here, Joseph was not alone. The Lord was with him. And then it says, and showed him 
mercy. You think, mercy? He's in prison. (laughs) How is that mercy? (laughs) Well, look at the rest of the verse. It says, he showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. It's one thing to be in prison and to have the favor of the prison guard. It's another thing to be in prison and have the prison guard hate you. That's not a good situation. You don't want to be in that situation. And that's not what happened here. Uh, The Lord showed mercy on Joseph even in this situation. And I think it's important for us to to remember this as well. No matter how difficult things are, no no matter how painful things may be in your life, God is still showing you mercy. Because what do you and I deserve? Hmm. Well, we deserve to be separated from God forever. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. That's separation from God. And so we deserve much worse than what we are getting. And so it is, in fact, the mercy of God. And here it was, the mercy of God on Joseph's life, even in the prison. And he had favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Now, I don't know that it started out with the uh, prison guard saying hey joseph you look like a good guy i'm gonna be really nice to you i think there was some real challenges that joseph had to face in the uh, in the interim in fact the bible gives us just a little bit of a hint as to what it was like if you look at psalm 105 psalm 105 and uh let's see let's look down here at Verse number 16, Psalm 105 and verse 16. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land, that'd be Egypt. We'll get to that later on. He break the whole staff of bread. Verse 17, he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. And we remember that whose feet they hurt with fetters, he was laid in iron until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Uh, So here we have some indication that his feet were in fetters and he was in irons. Whether that was during this time, which it seems to indicate because of the verses that we read there, how the king looses him, uh, or earlier when he was uh, held captive as a slave, or maybe both occasions. But here Joseph, uh, just because he's in this prison doesn't mean things are going well for him. And it seems to be a political kind of prison, um, but it doesn't mean that it was just rosy and chosy. And there's some indication that at least at the outset here, he was in irons. Uh, And it was a very challenging time. His feet were hurting in the irons. Well, back in Genesis chapter 39, we see the Lord was with Joseph in verse 21 and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Why do you suppose the keeper of the prison showed favor? Well, probably because he saw how Joseph responded to things and how Joseph was a responsible and honorable man. Even though he was in prison, he was uh, evidently an honorable man. And just like he was the, the servant in Potiphar's house and rose right to the top, so the same thing happens in prison. There's Joseph, and he's a, he's a prisoner, but the prison guard, well, he likes him. He likes what he's doing, and it gets better. Verse 22, the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. So he puts him in charge of all the other prisoners. (laughs) You're such a good prisoner, you're going to be in charge of all the other prisoners. And that's what happens with Joseph. He rises right up through the ranks. Uh, and, uh, And so the keeper realizes, hey, I can do some delegation here. And, uh, and I can let Joseph do some things. And that's exactly what happens. So uh, Joseph is prospering even in prison. 
so what's your challenge? What's your mess that you find yourself in? You know, you can prosper right there. Do not think that the only solution to your problem is a, is a change in circumstances. That's what we often do. Oftentimes, we want to ask God for a change in our circumstances. God, if you would just do this, if you would just change that, if you would just heal this, if you would just whatever, then I could be prosperous. I would be happy. Then it would be all right. Lord, just change this circumstance in my life. But maybe God doesn't want to change the circumstance in your life. For one reason or another, God wants you to be right where you're at. And maybe it's time for you and I to allow God to be God and be in control and thank him for what he's doing and let him bless us even in the middle of that circumstance. And so uh, to, to not be uh, disappointed with that, but to accept it, accept where you are and, uh, and allow God to use you right there. Because we know Joseph needed to be in prison in order to be promoted to be second in command in all of Egypt. He needed to be there. And you don't know that you need to be where you are. You need to be in the challenge that you find yourself. You need to be in that situation that seems so uncomfortable. You need to be there for God's purposes and God's reasons. And so thank him for it. Allow him to do it. And respond in the right way. When things are hard, Respond in the right way and let God do something for you. Uh, you don't have to have a change in circumstances. And so here he is. He's still in prison, but he's promoted even in prison, and he's in charge. Verse 23, the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. Sounds like Potiphar, doesn't it? Looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper, even in the prison. Were they working? Uh, you know, did they take him out and, and do jobs? You know, were they in the chain gang along the highway picking up trash? I don't know. But whatever they were doing, they were prospering. They were prospering because Joseph was blessed of God as a result. But notice, the keeper of the prison did not look to anything that he was doing. He wasn't paying attention closely. If you want an opportunity to escape prison, maybe that's it. When the guard is not paying attention. And it seems that he wasn't. He was so confident in Joseph and his, his character that he did not even look to what was going on. He just kind of let it go and let Joseph take care of it. Now, you might think, well, wait a minute. Joseph was innocent. This is his opportunity. God has allowed the prisoner guard to look another direction so Joseph can can find a way out because he ought to be free anyway. Well, maybe not. He doesn't take that opportunity. He doesn't. Uh, he allows God to work his plan. And, uh, and so rather than fighting against it, uh, Joseph is there in the prison, though he may not understand everything. Uh, he, he trusts the sovereignty of God. So he stays there in prison. Well, it seems to be that he's at least uh, working for Potiphar and in prison for about 13 years. We know that he, uh, he was taken as a slave when he was 17, and he becomes second in command in Egypt when he's 30. And so there's 13 years there that uh, he was working for Potiphar for some time, and then now in prison for some time. Um, and so we'll see how, how uh, this plays out. But, but this is a long while. And, uh, and you might think to yourself, that's not fair. It's a long time. I, I don't know how long. Maybe he worked for Potiphar five years. Uh, maybe he's in prison another uh, eight or something. I, I, I don't know. But, uh, but he's in prison for a little time. And uh, you might think to yourself, I feel like I'm getting nowhere. I feel like my, my time is being wasted. My life is being wasted. What's going on? Well, God is teaching you things. God is, was teaching Joseph some things. Uh, maybe Joseph was learning a little bit about management while he was there in the prison. He had learned a little bit about management under Potiphar. Maybe now he's got a second shot at it in the prison. He's thinking, you know, 
this sort of worked and that didn't work. I'm going to kind of tweak it a little bit. And he's, he's growing and learning and, and understanding more and more. And he's using that time. And, and God is developing him even in prison. We talk about it sometimes, how God needs to break off the rough edges and, and sand us down a little bit. Maybe that's what God's doing in the prison here with Joseph. Uh, Joseph does respond in good and godly ways, but that doesn't mean he's perfect. He's got some things he's got to learn. Um, but also God's sovereignty is working the timing out. Why is Joseph in prison for so long? Well, at least because the famine wasn't going to come <laughs> for a number of years. At least for that reason. And see, all the circumstances in Joseph's life were much bigger than his life. And the same is true for you and me. The circumstances in our lives, we tend to take this egocentric view of the world. Everything revolves around me, doesn't it? <laughs> and you think it all revolves around you, but you're wrong because it revolves around me. <laughs> and that's how we all think of it because that's our perspective. But that's not God's perspective at all. Reality is it revolves around him. <laughs> and, but his perspective is so vast that he allows circumstances into our lives that, that maybe for another reason altogether have nothing to do with you. But it's for his plan and his purpose. And so he's, he's in charge and it's okay that he's in charge. He's doing what he needs to do. And we are his servants. We've been created for his glory and for his purpose. So now chapter 40 here and verse 1, it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt, and Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in the ward. So here these uh, two prisoners come in, uh, the chief baker and the chief butler. Uh, these two jobs are, are important jobs to Pharaoh. He wants to have good food, right? Uh, and, he, and he wants to make sure that he's safe. I suppose that the, the butler would have the charge of making sure that everything was safe for the king to eat and uh, that he was protected from harm. And, uh, and then, of course, the baker would have had to be a, a trusted man because he was making the food the king would eat. If you wanted to poison the king, how would you do it? Either the food or the wine that he drank. Uh, and so these two guys are very, very important we don't know why they're cast into prison here, but you can almost imagine that perhaps there was some plot uncovered which involved some kind of uprising against Pharaoh. Perhaps it was something to that degree. And, uh, and maybe Pharaoh thought, these guys are in on it. They're going to try to kill me. And so rather than waiting it out, he decides, put them in prison and we'll do our research and we'll investigate and we'll see what the real deal is. So he puts both of them in prison. Now this is a political prison. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's evidently got different degrees here. And these guys seem to be, uh, they seem to have a little more clout in the prison. They're very important people. And so uh, they're not just on the bottom rung, perhaps where Joseph comes into the prison, but these guys already have some clout when they come into the prison. So much so that the, uh, uh, the prison guard, the captain of the guard, brings them in and tells Joseph to take care of them. Interesting. There's a thought. There's a thought. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so he, if, if it is the same guy, which seems to be, could be, uh, then he's bringing him back <laughs> saying, hey, you did pretty good with, with what I gave you, so you can do this too. Uh, in either case, Joseph is given the responsibility of taking care of them 
Well, they're prisoners, right? But they've got some clout, evidently. And, uh, and Joseph is given the charge to take care of them. And what does Joseph do? Well, it's not fair. They ought to start at the bottom like I did. Come on, what's the deal? No, he doesn't complain at all. In fact, what it says there is that he served them. And they continued a season in the ward. He knew this is what God had placed in front of him, however it may have come to him. And so this is God's plan. All right, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do a good job. And, of course, we know the story. It's a good thing he did, right? Uh, Because this is going to be very key in, uh, in his promotion later on. And so here's the... Uh, the chief butler and the chief baker. They are in the prison with him. And it just so happens to be captain of the guard brings them and uh, puts them in Joseph's charge. Well, the next couple of verses here, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up in just a moment here, but I want to read the next couple of verses. Uh, and we won't look at the dreams tonight, but let's see what happens. Verse 5, they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream, In one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream. The butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. Uh, This seems to be significant. Now, I know you and I both have dreams. And uh, and we dream about things. And you wake up and you think, boy, that was a strange dream. And, And Melody was talking about a dream. Was that this morning or yesterday? I don't know. That was a funny dream. Yeah, was it you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, you know how it is. You, you dream some really wild things sometimes, and it's just strange what you dream. Well, here, these two, the, the baker and the butler, are both, they both wake up, both having dreamed very similar dreams in the same night. And they can't get it out of their mind, and they seem to think this is significant. Because they both have these dreams in the same night, and they're very similar to some degree. Um, And so, verse 6, Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. They're perplexed. They're trying to figure this out. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of of those lords' house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? (laughs) Or he comes in the prison. says, Hey, guys. How comes you're so sad today? <laughs> and it almost seems humorous to us. You think, well, I'm in prison. Why shouldn't I be sad? <laughs> of course I'm sad. But there was something different. I find it interesting that Joseph knew them enough to know something wasn't right. He knew them. Joseph evidently paid attention to people. He cared about people. And, uh, and I think that's important for us. Uh, just to kind of think about a little bit, you might be in a sad situation, but there are others around you that may need some help, that may need some care, that may need somebody to reach out to them. And you might think to yourself, well, I need somebody to reach out to me. I'm going through a hard time. Somebody ought to take care of me and care for me. And, and maybe God has somebody that will come along. But could it be? that you're in the position that you are right now with the influence that you have right now to actually help somebody else. You won't know that unless you care for them, unless you get to know them, unless you develop a relationship with them. And, uh, And Joseph wasn't just going through the motion of the job, but he actually cared about these guys. He knew something about them enough so that he could see these guys are perplexed or something going on in, in, uh, in their lives right now. So, He asked them, why are you so sad today? You weren't like this yesterday. You're like this today. What's going on? And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream. And there is no interpreter of it. They they knew this dream must be significant because of how it happened. And they said, we don't have anybody to interpret it. Where do you suppose they would have gone to interpret it if they weren't in prison? (laughs) Probably to the, to the astrologers and the wise guys in, in Pharaoh's court. I mean, they would have gone somewhere else to get the interpretation. It, it wasn't as though they were, uh, th- that they thought there wasn't an interpretation. 
but that they had no means to get the interpretation because what they would have tried before was not available to them. They're in prison. They have no way out, no way to talk to those astrologers and the other guys. And so they didn't, they didn't know what to do. They were perplexed. They were down about this. And, uh, and Joseph just happens to, happens to have a background in this. God had used Joseph before, and, uh, and he was something of an expert in dreams, although uh, it was not Joseph himself. Of course, God uh, gives the interpretations, which is exactly what Joseph says. And Joseph said to him, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. Maybe Joseph realized what they would have done. And Joseph says, no, 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 you'd go to the wrong guys anyway. I know who understands dreams. I know who can give the interpretation of the dream. And it is God. Right there in the prison, Joseph is witnessing to these guys. Telling them about his God, the creator of all. And, uh, and so Joseph doesn't just sulk in despair in prison. He doesn't get bitter and angry at, uh, at Pharaoh or at God. I'm sure those feelings came through his heart, but he would not entertain them. He looks around for a way to minister to other people, even in the middle of the mess. Well, next time we'll look at the dreams that they dream and how Joseph responds but uh, I find it significant that Joseph immediately points them to God. And so God is going to use Joseph in their lives and in many, many other lives as a result. Do you have the, do you have the perspective and the attitude to point people to Jesus even though you're in a tough spot yourself? Or do you kind of wish that other people would take care of you and help you? You know, it's interesting for us to think about, and I think it's important for us to consider that God has a plan, and He wants us to serve Him no matter where we are. Well, let's pray, and uh, then we'll sing a, uh, a verse or two of a song, and we'll get to our testimonies and other things here. Our Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for what you're showing us in the life of Joseph. I pray that uh, we would learn some valuable lessons from him, that we would emulate him to a degree here, and that uh, we would seek to serve you and care for others, even though we may not be feeling the best ourselves. Sometimes we can be very selfish, but I pray that you would help us to see past that and to bring honor and glory to you even when we are hurting and we pray this in jesus name amen